Remember your W4. Remember your W4 looks like this. W4 does what for us? W4 does what? Okay, so it helps us with withholding federal income tax. So when you fill it out, I'm trying to get the example up here. And there we go. Okay, you fill out this top portion. And that's basically just name, address, social security, et cetera. You tell whether or not there's multiple jobs or if your um, spouse works or anything. And then you claim your dependents. So if you have children, this is where you claim them. Okay, you do get a little bit of a tax break with having children, but children are still expensive. Okay, um, so does the number of your dependents appear on the W-4? Yes, okay. So we're writing. Yes. Okay, one of John's coworkers quits during the next pay period. John works 50 hours instead of 40 hours to help cover shifts. On John's salary slip, which of his deductions will change? So as you work more hours, your federal income tax also goes up. So your federal tax will change. Okay, nothing else will change. Your insurance won't change. It's just your federal income tax. Yes, work more hours, they're going to tax you more. All right, Joel is paid twice per month. So Joel is paid twice per month at his job. He's paid $45,000 a year. What's his gross pay on his salary slip? Okay. So what are they asking you for? Well, $45,000 is how much he makes per year. How many months are there in a year? 12. So we're going to take 45000 and divide it by 12. Tell me what you get. Three, seven, five, zero. Now, he's paid twice per month. So twice per month means I'm going to divide that by two. Tell me what you get when you do that. Say it again. One, eight, seven, five. So every two weeks, he's getting paid one, eight, seven, five. John is starting a new job that pays $15 per hour, paid every two weeks, and he works 25 hours. What's his gross pay? So what we're going to do there is we do 15 hours, uh, I'm sorry, $15 times 24 hours, 25 hours, times he gets paid every two weeks, so two weeks. And that would give him $750. Cool. Okay, go ahead and flip the page. Okay, go ahead and take a look at that next one. I think it's talking about like piecewise functions. No, yes, maybe. Okay. All right, so with piecewise functions, if we were to have to write the equation for that piecewise function, Remember, we're dealing with linear functions. So you've got y equals mx plus b. b is your y-intercept. m is your slope. So let's just look at this green line right here. What is our y-intercept? So y-intercept, where does it cross the y-axis? At negative 1. So my b is going to be negative 1. My slope is how much I go up and over to get to the next point. So that's going to be 1x. So y equals 1x minus 1. Now, if we graph that in Desmos, that would continue on forever. There's restriction. It starts at negative 2 and it stops at 3. So it starts at negative 2 and it stops at 3. We also look at whether it's a closed circle or an open circle. 
a closed circle is going to have a line underneath. Okay. Yep. No, that's fine. That's fine. Now, there's another part to this graph. It's this guy down here, right? If we would have extended this based off of the slope, where would it cross the y-axis? Negative three. Can you write the equation for this line? So you're writing the equation for that blue line. Yeah. Open doesn't have a line underneath. So over here, we had an open circle here. No line underneath here. It'd be the same thing, except there's a line underneath and not a line underneath. That's the only difference. Okay. If I were to write this equation, I see my y-intercept is at negative three. Um, Y'all grab those two papers up there. And then I see that the slope is up two over one. Up two over one. Now, the domain restriction on this guy is from negative two and less than that, right? So how do we write that? We're going to say x is less than negative two. Let's say I'm not sure if that's the right equation. What can I do? I can plug it into Desmos, right? So what I want you to do is go ahead and take out your laptop and go into Desmos. Okay, so if you were to graph this, all you would do is type each equation in. And then if you want the domain restrictions, you use the little like early bracket, put that stuff in there. Okay. If I zoomed out, I see that that's the exact same as what my graph already shows, right? Okay. If you wanted to just graph it, let's say they gave us the equation and they wanted us to graph it, you would just type this in. You would say five, six, x, x is less than zero. Three x plus one, x is greater than or equal to zero. And then draw it, right? We good? Come to this one. This is the one that we started making mistakes on. Okay. So John's annual salary. All right. You should, you're going to get a um, tax bracket. Okay. And so marginal tax rate is the percentage that this person falls into based on their income. So for instance, they're 52,000, right? So where, what percentage do they fall into? If you, say again, 22, 22, right? Yeah, so we got 22% for our marginal tax rate. That comes from the table and it's the percentages that are here. Okay, yep. Say again. Yours says 92. Yours says 92? Yes. Am I crazy? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. Let's change it to 92. My bad. Okay. So if it was 92,000, what would it be? <laughs> oh, okay. Good talk. That's why I was like, I don't think so. Yeah. All right. My bad. Okay. Now, if John is making $92,000, okay, we need to figure out how much tax is due, okay? So 24%, we're going to say 0. 0.24 times 92,000, which is how much he makes, minus, and you've got to look in your little tax thing, over in this column, it tells you what you're going to subtract. So that's going to be what? 89,000. 75, and then we're going to add what it tells us in that column, 
15,213.50. Good. Now we're going to type that junk into our calculator. So go ahead and take a moment. Try typing it in because some of us are making mistakes on that. I got 15,915.5. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, to find the effective tax rate, you're going to take what you just got and divide it by how much they make. So what did we just get? 15,915.50 and divided by how much he makes, which is 92,000. So when you do that, I get 17.3%. Yep. Uh, isn't it just asking for, uh, can you think it's just like asking for the tax fee? Or is it like when the question is asking what is John's tax fee, do they also? Is that also asking for your tax fee? No. So tax due is how much he's gonna pay. The effective tax rate is the percentage of his income that's going to taxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead and skip that next one. Go to the one after that and go ahead and answer that question. So it's talking about like Mia's annual salary. Skip that question. Okay, so that's a question that we're on. Is your social security number on your W-2? Remember, what is your social security number? How does... Your, it is your identity to the government, right? So is that going to be on your W-2? Yeah. Okay, how many times do you have to put your student ID on something? Always, right? Same thing works for the government. You've got a security, social security number that you put on it. So yes. Okay. This is the part that y'all messed up, okay? Here's the deal. Instead of like guesstimating on this, here's the equation. I want you to type it into Desmos and tell me the max, the min, the domain, the range, all that. Yesterday, respectfully, was atrocious. Okay, so do better today. Okay, so take a moment, try these. But let's talk through like the, I don't want to say the easy ones, but the easy ones. Oh, max is this guy. Min is this guy. So here are your numbers for those. Okay. Hopefully you got those down. Okay. Now, what is the domain for this guy? Is it going to be all the, all the numbers? What's the range? So ranges from low to high. If you zoomed out, does it keep going on forever from low to high? Mm. Look at the purple line. If I zoom out, it keeps going, right? Looks a little weird, but it keeps going. So that's going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. So range is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. If the graph stopped, like it went from here to down here and then back up, the range is no longer from negative infinity to positive infinity. It stops here and then goes up. 
Let me say that again. Look at the red only. Let me get rid of this purple. If the graph looked like this, then the range would be from negative one, two, three. It's negative eight to positive infinity. Okay. Yes. So, the lowest y value yeah. to the highest y value. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, x intercepts. What are they? Negative one zero, negative three zero. And two zero, right? Okay. Y intercept. Where does it cross the y axis? Zero negative six. Everybody okay on those? Don't get those things wrong. Okay. Now, increasing and decreasing. It's increasing from here to here. Increasing from here to here. It's decreasing from here to here, okay? So the way you do this is you look at your maximum. You're going to use the x value on that guy, okay? So we're increasing from negative infinity to negative 2.12. You can simplify that if you want or around it. You're increasing again. You're going to look from your minimum. And we're going from ne uh, 0.7863 to positive infinity because it continues going up. You are decreasing from your max to your min. So that's going to be from negative 2.11 or 2.12, depending on how you went around that, to 0.7863. Again, you can round two decimal places if that's what you want. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, it's whatever the lowest y value is. So it's whatever that minimum point is. That's your y value. And then it goes up. Yeah. All right. Okay. On increasing and decreasing. Okay, now, in behavior, as I go to the left, sorry, this is all over the place, in behavior, so as we go to negative infinity, so as we move to the left, where is it going? Okay, it's going to negative infinity. As we move to the right, what's happening to our y values? Okay. Good on that. Okay, I need you to take out your packet. And when we're gonna go over one word problem, actually two word problems. All right, so locate that packet. We get, uh, we can briefly talk about it. Okay, if you're given this company's net worth and you're given this formula, okay, it's gonna ask something like, when does it have a negative net worth? And that's going to be below the x-axis. When we get back, I'll show you how to do it, okay? So go ahead and go to lunch. When we get back, if you graph this into Desmos, right, you're going to get something that looks like this. Okay, the question is, when would it be negative net worth? Okay, so what that means is it's below the x-axis. So from here to here is when it's below the x-axis, right? So that would be between the years two to four. Simple enough. Okay, so below the x-axis. You don't want to look past this y because that would be like negative time. Doesn't exist in our world, right? Okay, if the question asks you, when is it decreasing, then that would be from here to here. Okay, so that would be from 
whatever this point is, 0. 0.8453 to 3.15. So if it asked for decreasing, that would be 0. 0.8453 to 3.1457. Negative net worth is below the x-axis. Decreasing is when it's going down. Good. Questions? Okay. I got one request for um talking about you know how to review yesterday. It's like 3.1 review. I guess this one. And briefly go over this like function notation stuff. If I say f of one, that means when x is one, what is y? And that's 20. When x is two, what's y? And you're looking at the filled in dot. You do not want the open circle. Open circle is not equal to, okay? Filled in dot would be 10. f of four would be 40. F of six would be 50, and F of nine would be 50. Good, yep. Purpose of what? The forms, I know, don't mean four is going to take care of them. The employer is being able to take out the Fed tax. W2 uh, tells you all of like your income, and deductions and all that jazz. And then 1040 is when you're filing. So that tells you your bill due. Okay. Good. Okay, go ahead and do me a favor. Go ahead and clear off your desk. 